committee against child abuse. So he had a lot of people come come down. You know, so we sort of got uh, two events. You got two for two events for the price of one, and uh, uh, people who came to our thing got to meet those folks. People who came to uh, part of their organization were there to ask questions. It worked out well. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's good. Thanks a lot. Let's see. Hold on to those when we can uh, empty my okay. pocket out. So. Right now, I thought, I'd, am I good to come up now? You mind? You know, since Jeff is here, have you ever wanted to join? Yes, as a matter of fact, it's been a lifelong I think ambition. Got a for him. Hi, yeah. Hi. Sue. That's for you. Nice and to see. And this is Chris. Chris is going to buy Chris, you how you doing? If I can just get you to run this other shirt, I'll be so happy. Yeah. It's like you've got some sun. Well, I've been out a little bit. You know, this outdoor work, we've been traveling. We're doing. 11 counties in three days right now. We've been doing a fair amount of that. I thought you'd stop that after the campaign. You know, um, keep going. well, when I was, after I'd done it for a while, I, I quickly came to realize uh, that, well, a friend of mine said to me, I was describing this, he said, you know, it'll probably make you a more successful candidate, but it will definitely make you a better governor. This was a former governor. Uh, and I, I quickly came to that same conclusion, and uh, so I just determined if I actually made it, I would keep doing it. Like, we'll be going from here over to Fowler, yeah. and I'll just take questions, walk around with a mic, and well, that's one way take, to find is this okay really like that, yeah, Chris? Uh, actually, if you can tilt it. Kind of Try to twist it. These things always seem to come upside down. How's that? Well, it needs yep. to be pointing up towards your face. If you can clip it to the inner part of your shirt. Yeah. That good? Yeah, we'll make it work. Can we flip next, to, for next, you'll be telling me my yeah, shirt's I'll rubbing on it. For you. Yeah. We want okay. you to sound good. Yeah, because the looks are out of the question, so <laughs> we better we got at least sound good. There we and go. uh, tell Jason he's going to be on three. And he's got two microphones on. Will that work? There. Governor Mitch Daniels is here just before heading to a town meeting. Good afternoon, I'm Sue Scott, Jess Smith is off. Well, Governor Mitch Daniels is on his way to Fowler Town Hall meeting tonight. Oh, I know today there was an announcement about uh, I-69, the construction on that road project is going to be delayed maybe up to 10 years. We're worried in this area, obviously, about some local road construction projects. Do you see those being delayed as well? Well, there's no delay here. It just turns out that the, that the honest schedule uh, for what the money available will provide is not at all what people have been led to believe. In the case of I-69, folks, including me, were led to believe this was a 12 to 14 year project to completion. Turns out that what's really on the books doesn't start most of it for 14 to 15 years. The real issue that affects folks in, in this area and statewide is that we do have a big mismatch between the infrastructure we need, and I would include bridges and rail in some cases, and the available funds, but we're working on it. Uh, we're going to have to be creative, as many other states have been. We'll have to look at tolls. We'll have to look at greater involvement of, of private uh, uh, investors, if they're willing. But uh, uh, we're on it, and uh, we'll have, uh, we hope, some new ideas soon. Now, recently, we had a Supreme Court ruling on uh, Ten Commandments monuments at state houses and courthouses. And I know you've received letters so far from legislators asking, can you, would you put up a Ten Commandments monument at the state house? Yes. And you think that would be appropriate? I think it would be appropriate. It's certainly constitutional. And I, for one, am uh, just I'm puzzled as to why the Supreme Court ever lost its way on this or found this a close call. But uh, I, would, I would see that as, as appropriate. Uh, I know uh, uh, Washington would have, Franklin would have, Lincoln would have, FDR would have, and I would too. All right, you're on your way now to Benton County. What do you hope to get out of this town hall meeting? Well, I just, I, I've been doing these everywhere I go. We're, we're traveling an average of a day or two a week. I, I'm just trying to be the most open and accessible governor a person can be and, and, and still do justice to the job. So I don't know, I, I don't know what we'll hear over there. Uh, I just uh, generally give a very brief report on those things that have been going on and walk around with a microphone, take any question from anybody. So anyone who's got the time, wants to come out and join us uh, is welcome. And, and I know I'll learn more than anybody in the room. It has been a very eventful time in the life of our state. Right before I was sworn in, I think I was on a radio call-in program. Guy called in and said, in the end, nothing ever changes. Republican, Democrat, liberal, conservative, they're all the same. 
So I said, sir, I am very careful about making promises. I don't like to do it unless there's a reasonable chance, I think, of coming through. But I will make you one. In a year, you you may well decide that the voters chose poorly and that we'd have been better served by somebody else and that all the things that, the things that have happened have not been based on sound judgment. But you will not think nothing's different. <laughs> and I do believe that just short of six months in, a lot is different in Indiana. And uh, so we had to talk tonight about those differences and which ones you like and which ones you may not and about some of the things yet to be done. Quick summary of uh, events, what I think of as progress. Number one, the budget of your state government is balanced for the first time in 10 years. The two-year spending increase is the lowest in 55 years. Um, this involved a lot of steps that nobody was happy about, starting with me. But as you know, we, on arrival, we found a state that had run through all its surplus, essentially, that had borrowed 700 plus million dollars forcefully from schools and local governments simply by not paying them on time, which had been raising spending at an average annual increase of 6% year after year after year, even when revenues and income went flat. Well, that's a pretty good formula for going broke, and we did. Some folks said, well, it took a long time to get into it. Let's take our time getting out. I, I felt, and a majority eventually agreed, we need to grab this situation and get on top of it now. A balanced budget is a, a big achievement compared to where we've been, but it's, let's not over claim for it. Let's not overstate. We've got more work to do. We have to put some money back in the savings account. And in my judgment, we've got to catch up schools and local governments for the money that was paid late. But it's a heck of a start. A, a balanced budget, the fiscal condition of the state, it's a constitutional duty, but it is not the objective of government. The objective of government is better budgets in the households of Fowler and Boswell and everywhere else in Indiana. And our number one objective um, in, in seeking office in the first place was to try to get this state's economy operating on all cylinders. There's a lot of untapped potential in the Indiana economy. We've been trailing the national uh, recovery right along, and it's just essential we participate. The we put a so-called inspector general, a watchdog, in place, and that person has already brought several cases that we hope will put a stop to abuses and, and deter people in the future from trying to bend the rules. Yesterday, um, they, they arrested a whole bunch of people who've been stealing welfare money. The idea that a dollar we took from a taxpayer to help a poor person was diverted to somebody else's bank account is pretty offensive to me, and I suspect to you. Yes. You know, Indiana was fourth in the nation in the growth of food stamps the last four years, and number and the only state in America where welfare rolls went up instead of down. I don't claim that we've getting every, we made every call right. I've told our people, if, if we make mistakes, I want them to be mistakes of action, because we tried something uh, where we saw something that wasn't being done well. Uh, this is a world, you all know, where if you sit still, you will be passed by. And if you tread water, you will sink. And uh, we're not prepared to see that happen in Indiana anymore. I, I, I preach it everywhere we go. This state has got to come together and understand we are in this together. So when I'm in, I, I sort of do this a little differently, I think, than many people in a position like mine. Tomorrow, when I'm in East Chicago and in the heart of an urban area, I am very likely to talk about agriculture and remind people there that they have a very real stake in their neighbors in smaller towns and in rural Indiana doing well just as I want to remind you that it's important that we not let that, for instance, that corner break off and fall into Lake Michigan. Not a good idea. <laughs> they have a lot of potential up there, too. I went to high school with you, Mitch, Bob Bird. Uh, hey, Bob. Yeah, <laughs> we, we uh, have two children that both graduates of Purdue and IU, both living in South Carolina now, mm -hmm. working. And uh, my question is, after reading, I went to Ball State, the brain drain of college grads that leave the state, 
what can be done to try to hold these kids here? If, if people ask me to name one reason I decided to run for public office the first time in my life, only time, uh, this would be it. I just had finally read too many stories about our best young people going elsewhere. And I've now met thousands of them, literally. And I have to tell you, I don't know the, the, the case of the two bird kids, but I will tell you that I just about never run into a young person who says, man, I just couldn't wait to get out of Indiana. I don't like living there. They don't say that. They say, this is where I want to be, but, what, but I'm not sure I will find the opportunity that matches what I have studied or what I'm interested in or lives up, or as big as, as, as my aspirations. In other words, I think the economic variable is the critical one. Now, yes, we want to have a quality of life that's attractive to people. We want to have the amenities that young people will enjoy. Um, but uh, more than anything, if we have the economic opportunities here, if we can get at that 88 cents on the dollar problem successfully, I think the brain drain uh, stops and, and probably even reverses. Tell us the latest on the time. Uh, well, it's uh, 27 minutes till. Huh? Oh, you mean time zone. I believe the evidence was overwhelming that it made sense to, to, to stay in step with the rest of the nation and the world. I got a hundred of these stories about ways in which it impeded business and cost us in ways that were just about invisible. Here's just the last. I said, well, if I didn't understand it before, I do now. I said, what? He said, daylight saving time. I said, why, what happened? He said, well, we had a conference call to seal a deal. We're going to build a cheesecake factory restaurant and some property somewhere. And so we had a conference call set for 8.30 this morning. Indiana, Boston, and Los Angeles, where their headquarters is. So Boston gets on, Indiana gets on, LA guy doesn't get on. They finally tracked him down. He said, well, aren't you three hours ahead of us? And they said, well, uh, that's in the winter. But in the, in the summer, it's two hours. And I said, oh, well, what a, how irritating. I've heard that a million times. He said, no, not irritating. He said, I am not looking forward to going back to work. I got to go tell my boss we're out $35,000 because the guy in LA forgot what time it was in Indiana this month. Now, I only take the time to tell you that because it's that times, you know, dozens of times a day. And again, invisibly, that's what I thought we ought to fix since we could fix it for free. Uh -huh. Oh. There she is. I've slept in every kind of arrangement you can imagine. Guest rooms, kids' rooms, a lot of kids' rooms. Uh, and uh, Very friendly now. Um, folks are generally pretty uh, thoughtful about, you know, not keeping you up real, real late. But at the same time, I I always spend a reasonable amount of time learning a little about them and giving them a chance if they want to say something or ask any questions. All right. I'll go victimize the Sheldons here. Welcome. Thank Welcome. you. Very, nice to have you. Mitch Daniels. We're excited. Very nice to, excited. Nice to see y'all. Beautiful RV. Isn't it? Yes, it is. It's a little less beautiful than it was when we left <laughs> home. Vance, the state trooper that's driving it, uh -huh. knocked the rear view mirror off on oh, yeah. just oh, no. just as we left the state house. I see no deal. So, oh, oh. Not like I intend to kid him about it or anything. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. So anyway. So this is our friend Mary Beth Schneider from the paper. Hi. Did they tell you she was? Yes. So you know, I have uh, imposed now on, uh, I don't know, probably 60-some families over the course of about two years. But you? you're only the second ones we've ever inflicted a reporter on. Oh! There was one fine. other one <laughs> other family. <laughs> and uh, Do you need to uh, know what you're doing? Yeah, yeah, let me take it. Nope. We can take that for you. Yeah. Woo.
So, Mary, I didn't know if you'd... No, no, I... <laughs> After some of the places I've been in, no, no problem. like he's going to know all about me by sitting in my room. <laughs> Well, uh, I didn't know if you'd want the bed stripped or made, so I like made it. Baby. Now, oh, okay. tell Jacques, I think I got a teddy bear back in the right position. <laughs> okay, that is important. Yeah, I think it's just he's sitting exactly where I found him, but because I, I didn't want him upset. Uh, I thought that's kind of an interesting touch. I mean, you know, this is a guy's room, okay? You know, because I've stayed in. Like likes the little girls' rooms, you know, uh -huh. little pink bunnies around and things like that. <laughs> you know, it's an all guys' room. I it love that motor, room. motocross stuff, and of course all this <laughs> athletic thing. And then there's this teddy bear. I thought, well, <laughs> I made a happy noise. Did that make a sound? That... There you go. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Yeah, calendar, calendar quality. There you go. Tell them in. Thank you. I will be there. Uh, ready to roll, Ben? Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. See you. Uh, Vance was being a little careful this morning, I noticed. And <laughs> then when we get the day off to the, uh, start by knocking off the other mural. Uh, I think I just quit. We've never been known to kid anybody about the stuff like this, Vance. So I don't want you <laughs> to be all, huh? I don't want you to be concerned that this will ever come up. Never again. No. None of your fellow troopers will hear anything about it as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I'm a blabbermouth. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Mitch Daniels. What? I'm Mitch Daniels, governor of the state. I'm glad to know you. What, who, what's your name, sir? Ed Pisker. Ed, you come here every morning? If not, it was two days a week. Just two? Yeah, glad, two glad, days we, a week. glad we... You could come in that bus? That's me, yeah. yeah. We're just here for breakfast. Come on. Where's your plane at? Where's what? Where's your airplane? Oh, we don't use it. Hi, Sue. Hi, good. How you doing? Good. Nice, good you nice seeing you. Here. Well, so there's a rumor. Yes, sir. There's a name there, sir. I, I voted for you. Oh, you're the one. Yeah. I've been, I've been looking for you. The thing about it, I own a restaurant, but I really realize that 1% tax is important. That's right. Where it's been, where it's in place, it doesn't seem to hurt business and uh, seem to be a reasonably fair way to do something. So, yeah. It's hard to get a lot of the people, they don't want to change, but yet the population, uh, our growth is so heavy there, especially coming from Illinois. Yeah. Well, we, I, you know, I'm in favor of the growth as long as we well, manage it right and as long as it brings position. some business with it. That's my position. We should be getting the one down here in so they're going within a year. So I hope so. I, I know those people. Yeah, um, and then there are there's several more, including. Uh, you know what you want? Yeah, I'll just have uh, two eggs over easy with bacon and some uh, whole wheat toast. Can we get some coffee over here? Yeah, you, yes, I, I've done this. You just you just stand by. You see how hard the poor girl's working? I just want to say good morning. Mitch Daniels, my name, the governor of the state. You're who? Mitch Daniels, I'm the governor of the state. You're the governor of this state? I am, yeah, what's your name? Hi. Seriously? Okay. Seriously. I'm coming. Huh? You're in hot water, you know why? Why? You, you picked up the dirty cup. She, that's her job. She's out of a job now. No, no, no. Turn it poor, poor woman's working so hard, I asked her, I said, don't you want a little help? She said she did. You want some more coffee? Yeah, thank you. All right. Now, here's the guy you want to talk to. Yeah. He, he reads eight papers a day, and he's up on everything. <laughs> I tell you what, we're, 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 the, we're the most pro-ag administration in the states, in this state in 50 years at least. Yesterday we were down, uh, I slept overnight on a pharaoh to finish operation over here. We need to emphasize value for the dollars that are there right now. I'll tell you something I hope everybody can get together on, and that is moving more of the dollars we have uh, into the classroom. Uh, in Indiana we have uh, one administrator for every 105 kids, and that is worse than the national average. In IPS, it's 1 to 70. So a nice starting point down there would be to go look and see whether maybe some of those people shouldn't be in the classroom, reducing class sizes and helping kids learn, as opposed to, uh, you know, working in purely administrative jobs. That's a problem we have around the state. It's especially acute at IPS, and that's, that's something the new superintendent, I think, uh, with all his credibility here, could make a lot of difference on. What came out this week on I-69 was that although people have been speaking publicly about finishing in 14 years, the plans on the books don't start for 14 years. Um, and so um, 
learning that, uh, our commissioner correctly said, you know, the public needs to know this. They've been led to believe one one thing when uh, the, right now the facts are very different. Now, of course, some of us thought if this is a worthy project, then 14 years is a long time to wait. You can imagine what I think about 25 or 30. And so uh, all, it, all it really means is something we've said consistently, which is we're going to have to find some new ways to finance roads. This may involve private uh, partnerships. This may involve uh, uh, tolling and new options like that. Uh, otherwise, uh, you know, I'm, not, I'm just not going to be party to a continued con job where you tell people all over the state that just any old day now, they're, we're going to start on your route and you have no possibility of doing that uh, for many years. Uh, that, that's not honest and that's not the way we're doing business. I'm going to leave my support card. Anybody think I need to take it? We, we said that I don't think the mayor will care. He knows what he's getting into with me. Hey, Your Honor, am I okay like this? Okay. How you doing? Thanks for your hospitality. Good to see you up on this area. Well, I was talking to Becky for a while. You know, I always been here for a while. So I was talking to. Good morning, Mayor. How you doing? You looking over? Frank, Governor, welcome. Thank you for coming out. Thanks for being here. to learn a little bit about the... Yeah, we're, we're folks. I know. Down behind, but it's nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Can we get a picture with our representatives from Northwest Indiana? Absolutely. I would like to take this opportunity to really thank the governor. I think this is history. I think this is the first time since I can remember. I've been here for 55 years that I've seen the governor visit East Chicago three times in six months. I mean, that's great. Staff for bringing down the staff over here to East Chicago. That's to show how, how important it is to work with the people in, in Northwest Indiana, but mostly with East Chicago. And Governor, I appreciate everything. Your Honor. And now I would like for the Governor to say a few words. Governor. Becky and I have been uh, to Northwest Indiana over and over and over again, but there are still too many people in our state, including some members of our own administration, who don't understand fully how important this part of the state is. And uh, I, I, and I, I preach it everywhere I go. I was, say, I was telling people about it yesterday in places uh, like Fowler and Crawfordsville and Bainbridge. And uh, everywhere I go, um, I, I try to remind people that uh, we will not succeed uh, fully as a state unless uh, this area that's home to about a million of us doesn't uh, succeed very, very well. And I try to get people excited as I am excited about the upside potential for the whole Northwest. And um, just as I would always ask you to remember the folks in the small towns and in the rural areas like the hog farm I slept on last night and, and, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, and the folks I had breakfast with in the cafe down at uh, Rose Lawn. Uh, yeah, yes, they still have a nudist colony there. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I, I didn't visit it. Uh, uh, that uh, j just as I would ask you to remember them, you know, we truly are all in it together. Yeah, thank you. I made copies for everybody if you'd rather just have me pass them out if you don't want to go through them. Yeah, okay, pass them out, I'll be quick with it. Uh, let me just say uh, our aim point is about 25 after 11, then we're going to have a little conversation with the media. Oh, I'm fine. Oh, it's good to see you. Vern, I'm fine. Thanks for being here. Well, I think all right. We're always here to support you. Well, thanks for being here, this guy. I had to sit down and recover. Listen, Charlie, I, well, that's true, everybody up here. I mean, uh, when they disagree, they tell you, but they're simple about it. And when, when they agree, they don't mind saying so. This is his third visit to East Chicago. I know Gary's watching over there, so yeah. we yeah. got we to gotta watch. You know, we can't say too much, you know. <laughs> At one time, I lived in Gary, so I got to be cool, man. <laughs> <laughs> so once again, I would like to thank the staff, the, the governor's staff. I would like to thank the governor, the lieutenant governor, and all the state reps and senators. Thank you. And I would like to introduce my good friend for the last six months, Governor <laughs> Vince Daniels. Thank Thanks, Mayor. Thanks, everybody. In particular, I want to thank the legislators, Frank and Arlene, John, Charlie. Earl was here earlier, Ralph. Uh, for joining us as well. I um, uh, want to thank the, our cabinet for the special effort they made to be here. Uh, I want the, uh, this, our administration will uh, try to reflect every day the fact that we are all in this together in Indiana. 
and I repeat it over and over and over again to everybody that we work with, that we have to be about all six million people. And uh, just as I ask folks here to be mindful of the people I was just with the last day or two in places like Cloverdale and Bainbridge and Crawfordsville and Kentland and, and Fowler, uh, uh, I always tell folks there to remember that Indiana will not be the state we want to be until the northwest corner succeeds and, and realizes its fantastic potential. Uh, every day we do try to uh, remind ourselves and our fellow citizens of our common purpose and our common uh, objectives. A couple quick uh, news announcements and then uh, Becky and I and any of the others I'm sure will be glad to take uh, any and all questions. Um, there are some very encouraging words from the Standard & Poor's rating service about improved standing of Indiana fiscally. I want to give credit to the legislators who are here uh, for uh, helping put together the budget and, and uh, I want to give credit to the cabinet that is here which is spending the tax dollars of this state as carefully as possible. And uh, today's uh, announcement by Standard & Poor's means that the outside world is taking note that Indiana is getting its house in order, that it's passed the first balanced budget in 10 years and that the outlook for the future is brighter than it's been in a while. So thanks to all times. Um, before I thought we could create an RDA, I was talking about the state support in the airport. So I want to shake yours, ma'am. Elizabeth, thanks for coming up. Thank you for saying hi. Thank you very much. No, no, it's OK. It's muy bien. Thank you for translation. Fue difícil oír. No, perfecto, perfecto. Muy buen español. Uh, una última pregunta de las cuestiones. Sí, sí. A mí me preocupa eh, mm. los padres mm. documentados sí. que tienen niños que van a la escuela, hispanos ah, sí. o, o, no, o extranjeros. Si va a haber alguna posibilidad que usted trabaje duro mm. antes del invierno para que esa gente antes pueda invierno, sí. tener una licencia para poder conducir. You know? Será muy difícil oh. porque necesitamos uh, General Assembly, Assembly General de Charlie y los otros. Yo, sí. yo confío en usted yeah. y que, ojalá que Charlie yeah. y nosotros yeah. quieran. Dígale. <laughs> she, 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 we're talking about the, the uh, undocumented problem. She was asking if there's any way before winter, before school, to address it. I said, you know, I think we need the General Assembly. I, I don't see any way we can do this or should do this without. Yeah. So anyway, but that's there's a timing problem. But the, 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 the winter, yeah. The winter, do you have any follow-up? Real quick. Yeah. See, we, we don't go back in session until January. Just kind of follow up. I just want to say hello again. Yes, ma'am. From the day of inauguration, you yes. told me you were going to do this. Well. And you have stuck to your gun. Well. And I'm very pleased to see. You. Well, we're just getting started. Remember. We're just getting started. When I came to you and I said you must come to my side of Northwest Indiana. Well. And you we? told me the state was my. Side, yeah, I, is, that is that what I said? Is that what I said? You told well, me the state is where you wanted me to function. Uh, and well, I told you to bring me on. Yes. And you have. So I do appreciate well, that. Well, thank you we for all you're doing. Through. Thanks for being here. We like I say, we're just beginning. So. Did you sound like forehead? <laughs> I have done stranger things. <laughs> Are you sure you wouldn't rather like your shirt or something? Oh, forehead. <laughs> he won't know what I write.